Hello, hello. So in this video, I'll be showing you the process of how I created this image. Now, this video is going to be a little different since I'm going to be testing out a new workflow. Instead of trying to poly model or to sculpt the clothing, I'm going to be using a process called photogrammetry. And how it works is by taking multiple photos of an object, I can add those photos to the computer, GPU goes brr, and I get a 3D reconstruction of the object as a result. Now, the reason I wanted to experiment using this workflow is because, well, control C, control V, boom, I got myself an awesome model. I think it speaks for itself. Now, I have messed around with photogrammetry in the past, but it's been a while, so to refresh my memory, I threw on a jacket and attempted to scan it. Now, an important part of this process is the surface of your subject needs to stay rigid, meaning I was not allowed to move. Since if the surface kept changing, how is the software supposed to triangulate its position? So with the camera set up and mean position, it was time to start the photo shoot, which obviously posed a bit of a problem. So since I lacked the ability to be in two places at once, I was going to have to figure out a way to simplify the process. Now, the usual solution is to get a friend to help you. <laughs> well, since that was off the table, I decided to buy myself a new one. No, not a friend. Pretty sure there's laws against that. But a table, specifically a turntable, that I could use to rotate myself with. So by connecting my phone to the camera remotely, and by standing on the turntable, and by using a green screen to mask myself out, I would be able to take photographs of myself without moving. So for my first set of photos, I tried to include all of the jacket within the frame. The reason I did this was because the camera had a fairly high resolution, and I figured it would be able to pick up on most of the details without needing to zoom in. The other reason I did this was because I had no way to adjust the height of the camera, so I didn't really have much of a choice. So I took the photos and I transferred them to my computer. Now, I used to use Adobe Lightroom Classic to make adjustments to raw image files, but recently I've uninstalled Adobe Cloud. So now I use a software called uh, Raw for Rappi, Raw Therapy, the, the, this, I use this. So while in this software, I auto balance the tone, change the white balance, and then finally export as PNG. After that, I import the image sequence into Blender, use the keying node in the compositor to mask out the background, and then render out the image sequence. So with the pre-processing done, it was time to finally load the photogrammetry software. Now, initially, I was using a software called Agisoft Metashape, since I had bought it in the past and I already knew how to use it. But due to reasons, I ended up switching to Reality Capture, which was way faster and is also free. So I loaded the photos and started the alignment process, which took around 15 minutes. The next step was to generate the dense cloud. Now, generating the dense cloud can take anywhere from a couple of hours to much, much, much longer. I have so many regrets. But after the dense cloud gets generated, the next step is to convert the point cloud into a mesh. And then after that, we're done. You know, if we ignore the fact that the result ended up looking like shit. But no worries, we can try again. So instead of taking photos, on my next attempt, I tried recording a video. And the result was even worse. Fuck. But no worries, we can try again. So trying to capture the whole jacket at once wasn't working, which meant I was going to have to zoom in. And this was a problem since I couldn't adjust the height of my camera. So to deal with this, I used the advanced technique of squatting downwards. And I managed to solve the problem. Now this obviously wasn't ideal since by squatting, I was deforming the jacket, which was causing issues. But at this point, there wasn't really anything I could do about it. So I just had to ignore the problem and move on. So after multiple tests, I found that taking a video instead of taking photos gave me the most consistent results. And when looking at the final reconstruction of the object, of the jacket, I was relatively happy with the result. So now that I confirmed this process wasn't going to be a complete waste of time, it was time to scan the dress. Now, I know we would all love to see me in a dress, since let's be frank, I would easily rock it. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, I was going for a more feminine piece. So I decided to use a mannequin. So to scan the dress, I basically just did all those steps I just explained. 
After that was done, I imported the result into Blender and started to make some adjustments. The first thing I did was to apply an armature to the mesh and repose the arms. But doing this left a massive hole in the side of the dress that needed to be filled. To fill it, I copied the back of the dress and then applied a surface to form modifier to it. I then filled the hole with the duplicated chunk. I then exported the mesh to Mesh Mixer to fill the holes and to bridge the separated parts together. Once that was done, I exported the mesh back to Blender and began on the head. Now, for whatever reason, instead of using a normal anime head, I used a different type of stylized head, which I ended up switching out later on. For the hair, I wanted to try creating something unique for once, and not to just copy someone else for a change. But yeah, no, nah, that wasn't really working out. So instead, I imported an image of a hairstyle I found on Google, traced out the basic hair chunks, and then modeled it using the standard curve method. With the head done, it was time to go back to the dress. Now, unfortunately, the frills didn't come out too well. And I think the reason for this is that the turntable I used was vibrating quite a bit and it shook all the loose parts of the dress. Now, originally, to fix this, I thought that retopologizing would be the best approach since it meant that I would have nice and clean geometry while also staying true to the original shape. But that shit took way too long. So instead, I smoothed out all the pre-existing ruffles and then simulated new ones. I then went back to the head since I thought it looked a little bare and I added some ribbons to the side. After modeling the ribbon, I UV'd everything and the geometry was finally done. With the geometry finished, I went online to a site called Polyhaven to download some HDRIs. So I downloaded a few that I liked, applied them to Blender, and after playing around with the lighting, I found something that I liked and I rendered it out as a reference and began the texturing process. For the texturing, I didn't do anything fancy. I just color picked the reference, painted the dark and light areas, and then switch the brush to 30% strength and smooth everything out. Now you might be wondering, so why did you go through the effort of trying to copy the render? So after rendering out the model, I thought the render looked a little bit too 3D. And I was trying to think, how could I make it look a little bit more painterly? And I was like, oh, what if I, you know, paint it? If I paint it, then it should make it look painterly, right? Yeah, no, no, that didn't work. And after painting it, to me at least, it just looked like a less detailed and blurry version of the original. It didn't help that needing to paint all the little ruffles caused my hand to well. So I ended up getting very impatient and started questioning if the dozen and dozen of hours I poured into this project was just a complete waste of time. But I knew that quitting would have been a mistake, so I just pushed through it. Eventually, I got to the head, where I struggled to get the skin color to look natural. At first I tried picking a random color, but this didn't work. I then imported an image to use as a color reference, which helped, but the purple skin still looked out of place. And I figured this must be because of the background. Now, I didn't want to have to try to remember how to disable the world lighting in Eevee, so I was like, you know what, fuck Eevee, fuck Cycles, it's time for the workbench render engine to shine. So with the background changed, I continued working on the head and the hair. I also continued to struggle working on the head and the hair. Since I was feeling a little lost and unsure what to do, I decided to follow these two tutorials, just so I could get myself the finish and move on. With the colouring done, it was time to do the line art. Now, I tried to use the line art modifier for Grease Pencil, but it looked jagged and messy and just not very nice, so I decided it would be better, I would be better off manually placing all the lines. Now, at this point, my pinky was getting pretty irritated from rubbing on the Wacom tablet so much. So instead of drawing the lines, I went into edit mode and placed them instead. With the line art done, it was time to finalize the piece and to apply some post-processing. So I rendered the model using the workbench render engine and then slapped on some color adjustments and glare. And with that, the project was finally done. And as I stared at my character's heavenly aura, its crystal blue eyes, its soft wavy form, all I could think was... Well, this looks like fucking shit. Don't get me wrong, I don't regret doing the project, and even though it got a bit rough towards the end, it was still an interesting and fun experiment. But a fun experiment doesn't equal a successful experiment. See, the scanning process was meant to save me time, while at the same time increasing quality. But in the end, the project took forever, and the final result looks, well, meh. I think I ended up putting too much focus on the form, when it really hasn't been an issue for me in past projects. 
I think I need to focus more on the stylistic aesthetics of the anime characters rather than trying to get the form right. And that's the video. So while I work on that, thanks for watching. Till next time.